What's going on everybody? C4 here today and we're wrapping up with Saturday's Combine positional video uh, where today they're currently on the TV. I'm recording this one a little bit early. Some of the, the testing results are unofficial. I got shit I got to do today. But I think, you know, I'm confident enough to name out my top five tight ends for the upcoming 2017 NFL Draft. In my first rankings, I only did the top three. And there were three, David Joku, two, Evan Ingram, and one, OJ Howard. And things pretty much stayed the same, uh, more so. But I want to bring up five. Let's go up to five. There's people are regarding this as one of the top tight end classes uh, in the last you know decade or so, so there's a lot to live up to, and there's lots of talent here. And some teams that need a tight end are gonna find themselves a couple playmakers. So at number five, I'm going with Jake Butt, the tight end from Michigan. Hilarious. His last name's Butt, and he plays tight end. Okay, we'll stop being a child here. Six foot six, 215 pounds. Uh, we got the pro comparison on NFL.com of Zach Miller of the Chicago Bears. Yeah, that's that's pretty fair. He has strong hands, Chris Rote running, average blocking, but definitely a little bit upside there. Only concern with him, obviously, is the ACL tear that he suffered in the bowl game, which raises further questionable players uh, should they or should they not sit out bowl games. Because I think if he was able to compete, he'd probably be in contention to be the number two tight end, because I think it's pretty much consensus that it's going to be O.J. Howard as the top tight end. But, uh, you know, a guy like Jake Butt still, even with the ACL, with you know how me modern medicine has been able to develop and grow leaps and bounds, he should be able to bounce back and uh, get some snaps before the end of training camp, I think. I'm not exactly sure what the scope is of his recovery time. Uh, but his stats in 2016, he had 46 receptions, 546 yards, and four touchdowns. And I, I definitely do believe that Jake Butt will be a starting tight end in the NFL. So we have him here at number five. Go number four is going to be Bucky Hodges from Virginia Tech, six foot seven, 245 pounds, converted quarterback. I think he was a quarterback his freshman year and a high school quarterback. Pro comparison I saw from him was Devin Funches, which eh. You know, maybe, maybe Devin Funches. You see, uh, you know, obviously just from a size comparison, somewhat similar to what you saw with Jimmy Graham. Obviously different backgrounds with Jimmy Graham was a basketball player, but the red zone ability and the way they catch and use their body in the red zone is very similar, I think. Because Becky Hodges, 6'7", 245, absolute red zone threat, and an incredibly intelligent playmaker. That's what you get to see a lot with quarterbacks that transition to different positions. They're well aware of coverages, and they have the mind of a quarterback, which is always nice to have in skill position players. Only real issue for him is, still raw still a work in progress and may not be that guy that you want to throw and thrust into the tight end one starting starting spot right away but for teams that like to run two tight end sets or maybe have an aging tight end uh, maybe a team kind of like the Dallas Cowboys perhaps as so we can sit behind Jason Witten I think after in a year or so he will be a very nice playmaker at the combine ran a 4 5 8 40 and a 39 inch vertical the best vertical of any tight end again these are still uh, not 100 percent confirmed uh, but he still tested fairly well. And in 2016, he had 48 receptions, 691 yards, and 7 touchdowns. So he's coming in at number 4. Uh, coming in at number 3, still staying with my top 3. Uh, David Joku of Miami is at number 3. 6'4", 245 pounds. Uh, pro comparison from him was Jared Cook. Uh, for Jared Cook, I, you know, they just the way they look. I think Cook was a little bit quicker as combine. I think a little people are disappointed with Joku's 40 time. He's more of a jumper than he is a sprinter, but still incredibly athletic. Uh, with Joku, he's still raw, one of the youngest players attend this combine, but shows lots of promi uh, promise in pretty much every facet of being tight end. You could see him being an elite playmaker, catching the ball, and you also see him not being a slouch and dropping back and helping out with some run blocking. So I think Joku, uh, the top three tight ends here, could potentially... Uh, B day one stars in the NFL with a chance of two of them going in the first round. But I think with Joku, he's still a little bit more of a project than the top two guys that you're going to be able to get immediate production from. But he's still no slouch. Ran a 4.6440 and a 37 and a half inch vertical. Uh, so you know, I think the 40 time people were expecting him to run a low 4.5, mid 4.5, similar to what OJ Howard would have run. Because he ran a little bit on the slower side, uh, people may hurt him a little bit, take a couple points off his overall grade, but he still looks fairly solid to me. Uh, his 2016 stats were 43 receptions, 700 yards, and 8 touchdowns with the Hurricanes. So Joku, still a very good prospect. Uh, number two, people gave people shit on me when I gave up my first tight end rankings that I had about number two, and then he just absolutely had an incredible combine performance. And that is Evan Ingram from Ole Miss, six foot three, two hundred and thirty six pounds. Pro comparison for him is Jordan Reed. He's a receiving weapon with great hands, excellent athlete. Obviously, the blocking is an area that he needs to work on. But teams, you know, there's a lot. You know, 
back in the day when I first started getting into making, you know, some prospect rankings, teams, if you couldn't block, it was going to hurt your draft stock. Now, where tight ends are used as specialties, you know, just special we- weapons for offenses, I don't think, you know, the, the lack of run blocking for Evan Ingram is going to hurt his stock at all. Teams are going to want just that athletic, deep threat playmaker at the tight end position. I think it, you know, his 40 time, 4 4 2 40 with a 36 inch vertical. That certainly helped his draft stock. And I think I'm probably not going to be the only one. Now, I think, you know, I can kind of get credit because a lot of people had Ingram as, you know, fourth, fifth ranked tight end. A couple people have him as number three. No one had him as number two. I guess I will own that. Copyright that. That's the cool thing you do on YouTube, right? When you do something first, you pretty much own it. Uh, but Ingram, absolute beast man. And in 2016, it's that 65 receptions, 926 yards, and eight touchdowns. And personally, this was my hot take. I think Evan Ingram's tape over the last two years looked better than the Quan Treadwell's tape. Because, uh, you know, those two guys were the big wide receivers there for Chad Kelly at Ole Miss for the last couple seasons. I personally prefer Ingram as the as a better receiver. We all saw what happened with Laquan Treadwell, barely getting any minutes with the Minnesota Vikings as a rookie, uh, even though he's a first-round draft pick. At the wide receiver position, I was regarded for quite some time as the top wide receiver in last year's draft class. But Ingram is a monster for me, and he is number two. But the number one tight end is pretty much consensus. He's going to be a freak, and, you know, if if... You know, he doesn't produce as a rookie. It could be a bust of, you know, unpredictable proportions because there's just so much to like about him. And that's O.J. Howard from Alabama, six foot six, 250 pounds. Pro comparison from him is Tyler Eifert, uh, really a monster in all facets of tight end. I think his willingness to get better as a blocker in the last couple of years with Alabama certainly speaks to his character. But still the big question with him is his work rates. People think he gives up plays. He doesn't give full effort, doesn't want to finish his routes, doesn't want to try to get the extra yards or so, which is somewhat a concern. But I think, you know, obviously when you get into a professional environment, he'll be able to get coached up. And I think the determination levels won't be any worry. Uh, at the combine, again, on official 4 5 one, 40 in a 30-inch vertical. So the vertical, not as impressive as guys like Joku, Ingram, Bucky Hodges. But still, obviously, you're not going to really slight a guy. He's a monster. He's 6'6". He's 215 pounds. Uh, I'm not so worried about being able to get up there with a big vertical. He can pretty much just stick his hands up and he'll catch it anyways. Uh, and his stats in this final year at Alabama was 45 receptions, 595 yards, and three receiving touchdowns. So, uh, you know, not a lot of changes here, but I did decide to break it out to a top five. And uh, with O.J. Howard, Evan Ingram, David Joku, Bucky Hodges, and Jake Butt as my top five ten ends. We're going to wrap it up here with the awards. And uh, for the most NFL ready, it's going to be O.J. Howard. Highest potential, O.J. Howard. For my sleeper, I have Jordan Leggett from Clemson. Uh, best bust potential, like best, he's talking about like it's a good thing. I still have to think it might be David Joku just because he's so raw coming in. He probably would have benefited from staying one more year at college at the University of Miami. So because he still is a work in progress, those kind of guys, uh, you, you know, they're always a potential that they may have a bus tag and for the guy that most improved his stock from the combine i'm going to go with evan ingram and that 442 unofficial that he ran it'll probably be very similar to that anyways so let me know guys what you think about my top five tight end rankings are they different than yours let me know if this is your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button smash the like button if you enjoyed and until next time it's c4 saying peace out